Good evening and welcome to episode 7 of The Baseball Journeyman. We are at the Silicone Stalks and we begin tonight with a historic event as we induct the first member into the Aussie Villain Baseball Journeyman Hall of Fame in the category of an outstanding achievement. Now if we just follow me inside the Hall of Fame, we can see the Wall of Fame uh, as I stand on the Floor of Fame and we will see that the first inductee is indeed Max Probst and that is because on August the 11th, 2020, he pitched a perfect game. Hi guys, I'm Aussie Villain, and this is episode 7 of the Baseball Journeyman at the Silicone Stalks in uh, in the Dutch League. And this is the momentous day that uh, Max Prof scored a, uh, or pitched I should say, a perfect game. Look at that, zeros across the board. Uh, if we go down and have a look there, wonderful stuff. Struck out 14 batters as well, which equaled the club record, Almonte's club, and I believe still uh, Dutch League record. Um, so just a wonderful day all around for, uh, for Storks Baseball. So a very, very uh, worthy recipient of being the first inductee into uh, the uh, Aussie Villain Baseball Journeyman Hall of Fame. Um, to be honest, I didn't know if we would see a perfect game during this whole, uh, this whole series, but season one, there it is, the perfect game. Now, this is by far um, the biggest thing or the most important thing this episode, because we go and have a look at the, uh, at the Dutch League standings here. We can see that coming into the final game of the season today, we're, we're playing, well, basically, we're in a, a four-way tie or four-way battle for the uh, for the last wildcard spot to then play L&D Amsterdam Pirates, I'm assuming, uh, in sort of like a grand final kind of situation. Now, the fact that we're sort of fourth of the four makes me think that we're very much outside of this, but we haven't been eliminated as of yet. Um, now, Neptune is playing, we're going to have a look at the uh, at, at who everybody's playing, actually. Actually, I'll, I'll edit it in, so it should be over here for you. Uh, we can see that... Um, Curacao are playing L and D uh, Amsterdam. So if they, I mean, if they win, it, you know, conversations finished. They go into the into the way they get the wild card. Hofdorf and uh, and HCAW are playing each other. Now I know for a fact I don't think we've beaten HCAW yet this season. So if it's a if it's sort of a head to head uh, sort of tiebreaker, then we're going to want Hofdorf. I'm not quite sure exactly where we stand with them, but I know that we might be half a chance. Uh, if we're not eliminated as of yet. We're playing uh, the, the Twins, who are the worst team in baseball, lost six in a row. Um, so I'm hoping, if we have, we, all we can do is win. All we can do is win and kind of see what happens there. But it's going to be a very, very exciting end to the season here. Uh, now, what have we got to do to catch you up on? Let's have a quick look at the homepage here so you can see. Uh, Profs and Almonte are just absolutely just gods amongst men uh, when it comes to uh, to the pitching side of things. Hitting side of things, the Vint has a chance of batting 300 if he can have a good day out uh, today in our final game. Um, Injury-wise, we did have an injury to Jeffrey Baez. Now, that's obviously a massive, massive loss because he's a big part of our of our hitting, but he is just sort of day-to-day. -day. So what I've done, his influence on running is, is more serious than hitting. Hitting is minimal. So what I've done is I've just basically put him in as a DH because we don't really have anybody else. So his batting average has tanked a little bit, but a lot of that is just down to the fact that he's, you know, he is he is kind of injured. But an injured Bayers, unfortunately for us in many ways, is better than a non-injured uh, replacement player. Uh, all right. Let's have a quick recap of how we got to where we are today. Now, we left off here uh, at L&D Amsterdam, I believe. There was one game to go in that series, which we did win, uh, which was good. Uh, but uh, Almonte in this one was shockingly bad. He walked eight batters, which equaled the league record, can you believe it or not, uh, which was unbelievable. Alvarez came out of the bullpen. We finally got to saw him, and he looked he looked absolutely incredible. Uh, and a good, solid win against the best team in the league, which we have a really good record against. I think we've only we've lost... Uh, we beat them twice here, didn't we, I think? Where do we play them early on in this season? Yeah, so we've beaten them twice there, and we've beaten them twice there. So we've won four of six against the best team, um, which can only really bode well for us. Then we went and played uh, uh, H -A -W, HCAW, whatever they're called. Uh, we, we cannot beat this team. We have a massive, massive mental block. Game one here, it was the eighth innings that, that basically cost us. Nine runs they scored, and Alvarez in this one was an absolute disgrace. Uh, 0.1 innings pitched, five earned runs. Timmer came on. He wasn't much better, to be honest. Um, and it was just a disastrous game because this is where Bayez got injured as well. So... Uh, the, yeah, that was just not a good day for us, unfortunately. Uh, the other two games we lost in tight ones. Um, this one, we, uh, we we basically we won it in the ninth. And then, well, we tied it in the ninth, I should say. Then we went and lost it again, which was frustrating, to say the least. Uh, and then game uh, game three of this series here. Again, 
um, the seventh inning. So we just sort of blew it all in one innings there, uh, which was, as I said, very, very disappointing. And that was, again, Alvarez. That's a little bit of uh, the the Liam Hendricks about him, to be honest. (laughs) But he hasn't pitched all season, so we'll give him a little bit of a let off. Then we play Curacao. Now, this is, of course, the team that are right now in the wildcard spot. Uh, Game one here, this was Almonte back to his very, very best. Uh, He pitched a a complete game shutout, uh, striking out seven with six hits and zero walks as well, which was a nice improvement from the eight he pitched his previous start. Uh, Then we played them again, and of course, this was the perfect game. Um, So we'd gone back-to-back shutouts against uh, Curacao, uh, and then game three, unfortunately, just didn't go our way, um, which was really, really frustrating. Seventh innings again cost us if I mean two runs in the innings if that can cost you it was a tight game it was very much a pitching duel Coyman did okay uh Alvarez came in and just just didn't quite get us across the line unfortunately so that was a ma- turns out that's a massive massive loss because if we'd won that game we would be in the sort of pole position now to get into the uh, into the playoffs then we played the twins in a three game series um yeah, I mean, we've won all the games pretty much, or we have won all the games. Uh, game one here, we actually got all our runs in the seventh innings. Um, so that was that was good. You know, take a win however you get it. Uh, game two was sort of a run of your mill, uh, sort of 4 nil. I don't think it was a shutout by one pitcher. No, uh, Alvarez came in and actually looked quite good in that one. Um, almost we're pitching 1.2 innings there without giving anything up. And then uh, game three, we actually sneaked this through in the ninth. It was not a great performance from us, to be fair, but we did get two runs across in the ninth. Um, I think this also, yeah, this had a home run as well by uh, by Kuipers. And he's not many home runs hit in this league. It's his third of the season for us. Um, so that was, and it was a decent pitching performance as well. Coyman went six, giving up two. But Marino, uh, one of the bullpen guys, came in and pitched two relatively good innings, even though he did walk four in those two innings. But walk's a bit of a problem for us, but we're dealing with it. So that brings us down to where we are today, where we are playing uh, the, the Twins, needing Caracal and I'm assuming CAK to lose. C8, this one, <laughs> uh, then if we win, we'll be equal on games with with, uh, with Curacao, who we should have a head-to-head over, as well as Hopdorf, who I'm not sure, uh, how do they abbreviate themselves? Um, I wonder if we can have a quick look, Hopdorf, Hopdorf. Um, that's not any of them. Oh, hang on, so we can, if we, okay, we can see ourselves there. So we lost three, and oh, and so Hopdorf are the ones that we've lost a lot to as well. Um, okay, maybe I've messed, have I, have I uh, confused myself here? So is that Hopdorf? That's hot. Okay, so we don't want Hopdorf. Maybe we want CA, or maybe we just got a both bad record against both of them. No, we've got a bad record against both of them. So this doesn't look good. If it's a head-to-head, then we might be done anyway. But anyway, let's go play some baseball and see where it takes us. Before, one thing I did want to ask you guys before I forget, and I will 100% forget at the end of the episode. We have no upcoming free agents. You can see that they're all players, no upcoming free agents. If we look at salaries, they all set to, or for the most part, unless the guys we've put back down into the reserves, are all set to auto-renew. Are they actually going to auto-renew? Is Almonte's contract going to auto-renew? Or the fact we've just signed him on a one-year deal, is he actually going to be off at the end of the season? Because um, if he's off at the end of the season, we can't afford to keep him. Um... Yeah, so if you guys know, because uh, as you guys are well aware, I'm not an expert on how baseball contracts work. Are they actually going to auto renew, or they, is it something that uh, he, he may he may well leave? Um, any, any, yeah, let me know in the comments because I really don't want to lose all of our players uh, for nothing. But I'm not sure how how it's going to work. Anyway, let's get to some baseball. And this is a team we're sending out to hopefully, well, even we just end on a high. That's all we can ask for. Urbanus leads us off playing second. De Gwint uh, bats second at third. Uh, Brandel bats third at shortstop. The injured Bayez, the designated hitter, cleans up. It's Kuipers uh, batting five in right field. It's Williams, uh, or Williams, batting six in left field. Kendrick De Lima, who's been doing okay lately. He's the latest guy we've got playing first base. He bats seven. Dayton Bagel back into a little bit of form, bats eight in center field. Duran Dyke. Uh, he's the catcher. And now Monte, one last time, perhaps, he gets the start. We're up against Yan Evste. I, Ev, Evste uh, sorry. Um, we can see there, ERA of five, whip of just under two. Hopefully, Wars is in the positive, but hopefully we have a decent, uh, a decent game here. And here we go, here we go, here we go. I just want to say to a big welcome to uh, all the new subscribers. I, I, it's a bit of a crazy week with uh, one of the a Dutch uh, baseball websites sort of picking up on this series. So thank you. Uh, I think it was Seb Visser who did that. Uh, and I'm pretty sure we've played against him for, I think it's LND Amsterdam. Um, so thank you for that, mate. Uh, and all the new, um, not the great starters there for uh, Monty beaming the first uh, batter with the first pitch. Um, 
yeah, and a big welcome to everybody that, that sort of picked up on the series from that. Um, make yourselves known in the comments. It's uh, it's great to uh, yeah, great to have some actual Dutch fans and and some a couple of players as well, I believe. Um, yeah, it's great to have you guys on board for this. Uh, all right, so there's a pop out for the first out. Let's see if our Monte can get back to work here. That's a ground ball. Can we turn a double there? He gets one, but that is all he's going to get. All right. One, sorry, two away. Runner at first. Full count. Almonte walks about up. Come on, Jose, mate. We need you to finish the season big here for us. Come on. Another full count. Two out. Two on. Come on, Jose. They're running on the pitch, and that just might give up a run, you know. Come on, Dayton. Get it in, mate. No. And that is going to score a run in the top of the first. Runners at the corners with two out, and this innings needs to end now, please, Jose. Oh, he's gone for the pickoff, and he's thrown it away, and it's 2-0. Come on, boys. We've come so far this season. Not like this. Not like this. Ground ball. That should do it, but two runs on one hit, which is always annoying. Um, and we've got work to do. And hitting hasn't been our biggest strength this season. Urbanus to lead us off. Bit of first pitch action. Urbanus lays down a bunt. It's a decent one. Is he going to beat it out? Yes, he is. Well done, Nicky Urbanus. Now, if I know Urbanus and Larkin like I think I do, he will try and steal and get caught stealing. Here we go. First pitch. DeVint. DeVint. He's hit that quite well. Is that going to leave? DeVint! No, it's off the wall. So unlucky. Quillen DeVint inches away from tying the game. As it is, we've got runners at second and third with no one out. And let's see what we can do here with uh, Brandell at the plate. Now, Brandell has a decent, yeah, 17 RBIs this year. Um, he's had a pretty good year. Can he knock in two runs here? Three and one's the count. He has lined it out to first base. Oh, and they've got him at second as well. Have they? Maybe they haven't. No, they haven't. Okay. Animation was just a little bit off there. Baez now, the injured man. Can he knock in some runs? Jeffrey Baez! He knocks in one. He's... He can't run, so God love him. But <laughs> he's knocked in one. We pull one run back. DeVint still at second for Kuipers. Can he tie us up here? First pitch action again. Kuipers, he's got it. Uh, is he going to beat out the throw? He doesn't look they have a play. So he does get an infield hit. DeVint goes to third. And it falls now on the shoulders of Williams. To hopefully try and tie this game up. Come on, mate. Two and two's the count. Can he do it? Can he do it? He's... Popped it up into right field. And that's not going to get the job done. But at least we pull one run back. Keeps us close. And you would imagine, or you would hope anyway, that Almonte is not going to have another inning like that one for the rest of the game. Howman comes in the bat. He's batting 129. No, that's our book guy. I'm looking at the wrong side. Anyway, I don't know what he's batting. 217. And he walks. Jose, mate. He is off a short rest. This is, uh, he would have pitched on the Sunday. And this would be the Wednesday, I think. So maybe not fully fit. Can we throw him down at second? No, we cannot. And yet again in this game, the Twins have a runner in scoring position. Full count on the batter. There's a strikeout for our Monte. That's what we know and love. All right, Jose. He's up against Christopher G now. G is batting 173 this season. Two and one's the count. One out runner at second. It's a ground ball to DeLima at first. Should be a simple out. It is. There's two away. Runner goes to third. Michael O'Neill, the leadoff man, comes back in, batting 199 this season. Of course, he got hit first pitch, and he's walked this time. Come on, Jose, mate. Come on. It is Radamaka. He is batting 336, full count. He has grounded out, hopefully, to Urbanus at second, over to Delima, and we get away with that one. Still only the one hit given up, but Almonte just looks like he doesn't have his uh, radar on today. All right, it's DeLima. He's only batting 129 this year, but he has improved a little bit of late. He's hit that quite well, but it's not going to get past the shortstop, and that is one away. Brings up Dayton Bagel. He has recaptured his form. What can he do? Two and one is the count. He has hit that, popped it up, and that should be a simple catch out there in center field. And it will be the catcher, Jurian Dyke, who comes in to bat with two out and not much hope. He's in a frosted streak. He is a better defensive player. Um, and he actually hasn't been hitting too badly, I don't think. But there we go. Uh, the difference between him and Vandenberg is not its not, not huge. Uh, but he is the, but Dyke is the better defensive catcher, which is why we've got him in in this one. Um, all right, Marlon to the plate. He is in a hot streak, batting 282 this year. 
What can Almonte do with him? He's popped it up. Should be caught there by De Lima or the catcher. It is De Lima, and that is one away. Brings up Vince Rui. Roy. I'm not quite sure how you say that. He's grounded it to Delima. Delima has his second uh, out of the innings. Excellent stuff by the first baseman. And now Monty now faces Verkirk, who is batting 243 this year. 2 0 is the count. He's not on today, is he, Almonte? Come on. That's been popped up as well. And, I mean, if he's not on giving up one hit, he's not doing too badly, I suppose. But he just looks a little bit off. Um, he is, he, before the game started, he is five strikeouts away from 150 strikeouts for the season. Obviously, he has one, so he needs four more to get to that milestone. Urbanus, 0-2 has been beamed, and that gets him to first. They're examining his hand, he's fine to stay in the game. Now, can DeVint do something wonderful here like he did last time and send Urbanus around? 2 and 0s the count. He has popped it up on this occasion, and that's going to drop him back below that. Oh, it's a stunning catch out there. It's going to drop him back below that 300 batting average as well. Let's not forget DeVint's going for that. Uh, Brandell now, one out, runner on. What can he do? He's hit that well, but straight to left field, unfortunately. And that is two away. Urban is still at first, and he will almost certainly try and steal as Bayez tries to do something wonderful. One and one's the count. Bayez, he's hit that really, really well down to right field. It's going to get down. I don't think Urbanus can score from there, but he will get to third. And it's going to bring Kuipers up with a chance now to tie us up. Come on, Ricky boy. He's batting, what's he batting? 255 this year. First pitch action. He has oh, straight to shortstop. Bayez can't run, so it'll be an easy out at second. And unfortunately, we do not tie it up. We are still the one run down, but we're still right in this game as well. Jose Almonte comes back out now. 70 pitches deep, 3-0. and We might see a little bit of our bullpen this game, I think. He walks the leadoff man yet again. And unfortunately, I think Almonte is going to come up short on this uh, 250, no, 150, sorry, strikeouts. There's another one that gets him to 147. One away runner at first. It brings up Brands. He is 0 for 1 today. 2 and 1's the count. He's popped that up as well. Bayez, he can't run, but he should be able to get to that. And there we go. That is 2 away. Let's end this innings, please. Chris G comes up, batting 171. Or 172, actually, I think it was. Ground ball to Brandell. Anything can happen when he has the ball. He does get the out at second. I was having a look through the uh, season stats earlier on. Uh, Brandell and DeVint, shortstop and third base, uh, both uh, had uh, career seasons, let's say, in terms of errors. Absolutely shambolic in the field. It's uh, Williams to the plate, batting 206, 0 for 1 today. Full count on him. What can he do? He can strike out. Perfect. Brings up DeLima, batting 127. Of course, he is 0 for 1 as well. 2 and 2 is the count on him. He's hit that really well, back up the middle, and that's going to be a one-out single for DeLima. Tying run aboard. He's not the quickest. Dayton Bagel, can he start to work him around? He's 0 for 1 today. 1 and 0 is the count on Dayton. He has hit into a double play, and that'll do it for the innings. Uh, I do, you just get the feeling, don't you? Do we want to have a look at the out-of-town scores? We probably do, don't we? Um, is it options? Yeah. Out-of-town scoreboards. Uh... L&D Amsterdam's doing their thing. Well, they, they're the bottom of the fourth. Uh, H, so we, well, that, that, that has, someone has to win that, so I don't necessarily know if it matters. Um, but as things stand, Curacao are losing, and that's what needs to happen for us to have any sort of chance. We need to do our part, though. If we're not winning, it doesn't really matter what's happening elsewhere. Bunt down the first baseline. Easy play for Delima. He's actually had a decent game defensively so far, hasn't he? I'll say that now, and he'll drop some horrible clangor. Let's see what Almonte can do with Radomacker. That's been well hit out there into left field, and that will be a one-out single for the Twins. Brings up Marlon. Hot streak. He is on, batting 280 this season. 0 for 2 today. Can we keep the O? Can we get a double play? He's popped it up to Dayton Bagel. He should make a catch out there. Keep the runner at first, and that is two away for Vince Roy, who is 0 for 1 today, batting 213 this year. The runner tries to steal. Dyke is not going to get him. And that is a runner in scoring positions. Now, it is 0-2. You just need one strike here, Jose. He grounds it down there to DeVint, De and he gets the play over to first. And that gets us out of the top of the fifth. Still in a decent spot. We just need to get uh, this run across the plate. Dyke to lead us off. 0-1 is the count. Dyke has popped it up. First baseman's going to make a simple catch, and that is one away. Brings up Urbanus. Uh, one for one so far today. Got beamed, of course, last time up. One and two's the count. Come on, Nicky boy. 
Strikes out. That's two down. Brings up Quill and DeVent. One for two. He is as well. One and one's the count on him. Come on, mate. Come on. Let's send one over center field. Come on, mate. Swings at what looked to be a ball, and it's grounded out there to shortstop, and that'll do it for the fifth. Still the one run down. Almonte comes back out for the sixth. 97 pitches deep. 0-2's the count. Gets another strikeout. That's three. He has 148 strikeouts for the season. Is he going to get a chance? Is his arm going to last that long? Three and one's the count. That's been popped. No, that's not been popped. That's been hit to the fence. That's at least the double. Can Bagel get it in quickly? He can. It's a really good throw in there to second. And uh, that is one, on, uh, one out, one on second. And it brings up Hellman to the plate, batting 215, 0 for 1 today. 0 and 2 is the count. Can Jose sit another one down? Yes, he can. That is now 149 strikeouts for the season. Can he do it? 2 and 0 is the count. That has been well hit, and that might cost us a run. Get it in, Williams. He does. But we cannot stop the run crossing the plate. And we drop down another run. Does that do it for Jose? No, he gets one more batter. He's not going to strike this guy out. He walks him. It might be time. Jose is going to finish on 159, isn't he? 149, sorry. No, he gets another batter. It's Michael O'Neill. Owen wins the count. O'Neill's popped it up. Williams is going back and around. He should make the catch. He does, but we drop another run back. And that might just about do it for Jose Almonte. Will we ever see him again in a stalk shirt? We'll have to wait and see. All right. It's Brendel to lead us off. First pitch swing down to third base, and that should be a simple out. It is. Unfortunately, no errors there for us, and that is one away. Brings up Baez. Can he clear the fence for us? Come on, Jeffrey. He's hit it well. Another hit. Unfortunately, he just can't run. Um, but, you know, th this is the price we have to pay if we get someone that can hit in there. Ricky Kuipers now. What can he do? Two and two's the count. One on, one out. He strikes out. That's two away. And this is the weaker part of the order now as Williams comes in the bat. He is one and two the count. And he's watched strike three go past. And it's just beginning to feel a little bit like it's not going to be our day. Jose Almonte does continue. 119 pitches deep he is now on, a, what, two or three days rest. The rain's beginning to fall. It's become heavy. We've called a rain delay. Are we going to get rained out on the final day? It's a lot of rain. 67 minutes, we've come back. Almonte, 120, is absolutely gassed. Can he get this last strikeout? Owen wins the count. It's not going to be the day. That's been hit straight back up the middle. It's a leadoff single. And as much as I want Almonte to get his 150, he's got to go now. He's, he's tied. It is. He finishes the season 149 strikeouts. Ibrahim Rendon comes on the pitch. His ERA is 408 this season. He's been decent without being outstanding. Two and two's the count. That could be a double play. Urbanus, no, just the one. That is one away, but the runner does go to second. Brings up Vince Roy. He is 0 for 2 today, but of course, that was up against uh, Almonte. That's been hit back up the middle, and that just might cost us another run. Bagel's there. Can he get it in? He can. One out. Runners at the corners, and infield is in. We cannot really afford to drop any more runs back here. One and two's the count on the hitter. Strikes him out. A massive, massive strikeout. That's two down. Let's just get Aaron's out now and we're out of this innings. He's one for two today. Oh, and two's the count. He's got it back up the middle and it's 4-1. And we still have runners at the corners. Danger is still very much there. We have the ability to, to get, you know, three or four runs back, but you don't want to put the pressure on yourselves. 2-0. and oh. That's been hit. It's not. It's going to drop in. It's going to score another one. It's 5-1. And a team that couldn't win a game all season has suddenly decided on the final day where they've got absolutely nothing to play for that they're going to start hitting. Rendon to continue. He's, he's not had a good time of it, has he? It's not been a great... Uh, the bullpen continues to let us down at times. That should end it over the first urbanist. There it is. And we need four runs to get ourselves into extra innings and keep our season alive. We stretch in a little bit of trouble. It's Kendrick de Lima. To lead us off. What can he do? Up against a new pitcher. Can we jump all over their bullpen? This guy's ERA is 707. Yes, please. De Lima with the leadoff walk. We need base runners. Dayton Bagel now. He's 0 for 2 today. 3-0 is the count on him. He walks. 
That's two men on. All right, it's going to bring up Dyke. And he does have a nasty, or well, a nice habit, I should say, not nasty habit, of getting hits when we need them. Three and one's the count on Dyke. Dyke walks. They've loaded the bases for us. The tying run comes to the plate, and that is Nick Urbanus. He's already hit one home run this season. A lovely time for another one. Three and one's the count. They've walked in another run. Oh, this guy is worse than anybody we've had in our, out of our bullpen. We've had some bad ones out of our bullpen. DeVint now with a chance with loaded bases. Come on, Quillen. He has popped it up. Is that going to be deep enough to score the run from third? We're about to find out. No, it's not. And that is one away. Brandell now. We would love a nice hit up the middle from you, please, mate. Come on. Brandell, he's popped it up, and we're two out. And it's going to be Jeffrey Baez. He's two for three today, but this is when we needed the hit, mate. You haven't, you've gone too early. One and oh. Baez, he's popped it up, and we waste loaded bases. He's been hitting for fun today, and when we really, really needed it, Baez has popped it up. Rendon to continue. Two and two's the count. We enter the eighth. Three runs back. There's a strikeout. Excellent stuff. Brings up Michael O'Neill. He's 0 for 2 today as well. 0 and 2 is also the count. Rendon. Oh, it's a display from Rendon. Excellent stuff. Can we get a nice quick innings here? Radmacher to the plate. He is 2 for 4 today, batting well over 300 for the season. He's ground that down there to DeVint. Can he make the play at first? No, he cannot. And that is a two-out single. Brings up Marlon now. 0 for 4 today. Full count. Can we get him? Yes, we can. Can we? No, we've walked him. Come on. Let's end this innings here, please, Rendon. It was looking so good. That's a ground ball. That should be out. Brandell over to Urbanus. That ends the top of the eighth. We go to bat again, needing at least three runs to try and keep our season alive. Kuipers to lead us off. One for three today. Two and two's the count. Come on, Ricky boy. Come on, son. Ground ball to second base. Is there going to be an error? No, there is not. That is one away. Brings up Williams now. 0 for 3 today. Not had a good day at the plate. Can he get something here? 1 and 1 is the count. Williams pops it up. And that is going to be 2 away. We're getting down to our final 4 outs now. Oh, is it? It's going to end in heartbreak, isn't it? DeLima with a full count. Can he get himself on base? No, he grounds at the shortstop, and that will do it. We are three outs away. We need to keep our season alive with our final three outs. Rendon to continue. I'm not quite sure why he's still on the mound, to be honest. But Vivac, no, Vivac is a Formula 3 driver, isn't he? It's for Vakirk. There we go. Got there in the end. Anyway, it's a walk. It's a three-pitch walk, and it brings up Dario Alvarez. Now, Dario is lethal versus a left-hander. He is not quite so good versus the righties. ERA, you can see, is up is a 15.919. Um, that is actually well, well down. It was up to 43 after all. So he is actually getting better the more that he plays for us. Um, but we need him. We need to be lights out here, doesn't he? Come on. Two and two's the count on the new guy. There's a strikeout for Alvarez. That's two down. All right. Let's get this last out. And then go about the work with the bats. One and O's the count. Popped up. Bagel's going back. Can he make a catch? No, it's off the wall. I don't think the run's going to score, but no, it is going to score. We're going to get him at third, are we? No, it's a triple. And at 6 2, we are down now, and it just makes that work a little bit more difficult for us. Can Alvarez end this now, please? Runner at third, of course. We don't want another run going in, and that's exactly what's happened. 7 to 2. And I believe we are going to fall at the final hurdle. Alvarez is starting to fall to pieces now. Radmacher coming. He didn't need just bat. This is ridiculous. Three for five he is today. A lefty. Now, Alvarez is good versus a lefty. Strikes him out. But we need five runs in the bottom of the ninth at a minimum to keep our season alive. Dayton Bagel to lead us off. One and one's the count. He gets a good piece of it. I tell you what, that's a nice way to start a ninth innings. Bagel stands at first. Dyke's going to... Now, is he going to get pinched hit for? He's not. A new pitcher comes in. His ERA is 6.58. So, if we can get all of those six <laughs> runs this innings, we'll be doing okay. Come on, Dyke. Can we get another base runner here? We need base runners, of course, not runs, don't we? I mean, we need runs, but we need base runners. That's sort of a sacri... Oh, that's going to be a double play. Dyke, you idiot. Well... 
Now we need the mother of all two out rallies. It's Nick Urbanus. He's one for two today. He's been hit. He's got hits. What can he do? Three and one. He walks. That keeps the season alive for one more batter. Quillen De Vint comes up now. Needs a hit to get to 300. But hit main actually not good enough to get to 300. But what can he do? Three and one's the count on him as well. He walks. Of course, none of this matters quite yet because we need five runs. But you've got to start somewhere. Philip Brandel, 0 for 4 today. Not had a good game. 3 and 0's the count. They've walked another one. Tying run is on deck. Jeffrey Baez, 2 for 4 today. Can he do it? Two out. One and oh is the count. This is our season. Bayez. Oh, Bayez has he sent it. It's gone. It's a grand slam from Jeffrey Bayez. It's seven to six. We're down to our final out. But we are still in this season. Our season is still alive. And that is unbelievable. Jeffrey Baez with the Grand Slam. That's almost Hall of Fame induct worthy as well, given the context of what he's done there. A new pitcher comes in. It's Ricky Kuipers. He's hit three home runs already. He represents the tying run. Two out. New pitcher on the mound. What can Kuipers do? Come on. Oh, he's grounded it out to second. And our season ends. So there we go, our season ends so close, but so, so far away. Uh, we're right there in mid-table, fourth of eight, uh, of eight or of seven? No, we're fifth of, we're fifth of eight, uh, just below halfway, 500 on the nose. Uh, if we had have won that game, we would have finished equal, um, sort of joint top of, for the wild card. Now, I'm not quite sure what would happen in that situation if it would be a three-way playoff. It looks as though uh, Kurakal and HCAW are going to have a playoff. So if we'd finish, I don't know what a three-way tie would have meant. Uh, let me know if you do know in the comments. But there it is. We end at 500. We end, in a way, it would have been better just to end on the on the Grand Slam, wouldn't it? But there we go. That is it for this today. That is it for the season. If you have enjoyed that, please do hit thumbs up. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, we will do our end of season awards. Uh, and then we will play through till spring training next season as we look to build a team um, to maybe just go one. We only need, needed to be one or two games better, really, didn't we, to, to be in the wild card. So that's all for tomorrow, guys. Let me know if you know if the contract renewals. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure what to do about that one. Hopefully they will auto renew and we'll have a similar squad. Otherwise, we're going to have some serious trouble if people want more than minimum wage to renew. Uh, anyway, guys, I've been Ozzy Villain. I'll see you tomorrow for the end of season awards and the uh, and all the off season as well. Take care.